Welcome, everyone, to That Kind of Nerds Podcast, a weekly show that tells you what is going on in the nerdy world. I am CJ Mellon, joined by Brian Thornton. Welcome. Uh, Josh is is not with us uh, this week. Uh, Josh is on a date night uh, with his lovely wife, Laura. Uh, and as long as they don't steal anyone's reservation at the restaurant, I think they'll be okay. I mean, nothing could happen that way. Let's right? face it, Josh isn't going anywhere without a resi. Nah, that's very true. He's got he's got the resis. He and, doesn't need the coops. He he's got the in. And and if he did steal a reservation, he could totally handle better than Steve Carell and Tina Fey. He can <laughs> also he can also do the the little like I'm gonna hide the 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 five dollars in my palm thing, grease the palm. Oh yeah, he does thing. the 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 bride. I can't the, I can't do I can't that. Do I'm that. not suave enough. I mean, I, I just like I usually have a seizure. I'm like, oh, money just fell on the floor, waiter. But, you should pick that up. I, I think it's yours. When I give it to him, it's all wet and, and the the bill is like falling apart. So yeah, I, you're I you're you're a little slimy and clammy in the hands. If this is your first episode, I do encourage you to go to intro that kind of nerd dot com. There's a link in the show notes. Learn a little bit about us and the show, and then you can go ahead and dive into this episode. Or like Brian's been saying the last couple of weeks, just dive in, just kind of see what happens. And I'm going to recommend that you just skip all of that and just listen to the episode because we're awesome. I do want to bring up uh, one point of business. uh, This week is E3, the Entertainment Electronic Expo, uh, which is where all the big gaming news will be coming out. So we will talk about some of just maybe the highlights uh, on next week's episode. So uh, stick around for that next week. So listen, let's start off the, the nerdy world with some of the most important news that came out this weekend. That's BlackBerry making a new phone. No, nah, I'm just, I'm just kidding. They did that. Yay! But, but no, nobody cares. Really, nobody cares. Let's rather than take a look at the world of TV and movies in a segment that we call screen to screen. Uh, and man, oh man, did some trailers come out this week? They just, they just wanted us to sit down in front of the the YouTubes and watch it at three to four minutes a piece. Uh, the first trailer is How to Train Your Dragon Three, uh, which gives us Where our Hiccup first. Hiccup has a beard. Yeah, manly. And he's, He's getting his flirt on. You know, it's all about the that dragon love. He's getting his flirt on. He's trying very hard to show Toothless how to get his flirt on. Everybody flirting. Everybody flirting, but more importantly, they're all failing, which is what I expect from Hiccup. <laughs> uh, listen, this this is actually pretty interesting. Uh, it's been a while, right, since this franchise kicked off in, like, 2010. Yeah, well, so the first movie, I'm going to look it up. Because you brought up years, and I normally pretty good with this. I'm but sure it's how did how did Train Your Dragon 2010. The second movie came in 2014. Yeah, but in between they've been uh, doing that TV series on Netflix. Oh, so like this 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 movie series slash TV series is based off of like seven books, from what I understand. And I think they're just doing the major stuff in the movies, but I'm pretty sure these TV sh- episodes tie in in between the the, the feature films. I kind of hope not. I kind of hope it's like like a non-canon thing that they're just like, and it's there, the adventures of, but like, come over here. The, the movies are what really matters. The movies are what really matters. Um, Listen, I, I, I'm a fan of the franchise. I, I admit was not a huge fan when it first started. It took me a while to kind of warm up to it a little bit. You bite your tongue. Uh, my wife cries every single movie that they make for this. So, uh, I, uh, I am ready for this. I, this is not a movie pass movie. I will pay money to go see I don't movie. believe you. I'll pay money. You get to see a free movie or like a, a, a free movie every day. You're telling me this isn't going to be one of them. This is not going to be one of them because it's gonna, probably going to be in a larger format. Lies. Uh, so I think it's pretty interesting. Now, the, the next trailer though, that really piqued my interest was Bumblebee, the official trailer for the Bumblebee spin-off movie. Mm, which ish. which if they just stopped here, if they just don't release the whole movie, just give me this and walk away, I'll be pretty happy, but I'm I'm waiting for them to screw it up. Eh, it looks like they are doing um ET but with Bumblebee. And I appreciate <laughs> that. I do. Yep. I think Haley Steinfeld's wonderful. I think she's a great actress. Um, I just, I don't care. Yeah. I like Bumblebee when he's next to Optimus Prime. Who? And like the the whole timeline is screwed up. Yeah. And like. It's not even talking about timelines. I don't. I don't remember. I'm going to have to rewatch the first movie, but I don't remember anybody saying, oh, Bumblebee's been here since the 70s, they, apparently. They did that in the last movie, the last In night. the last one, but I'm talking like the first oh, yeah. one. No, no, no. They, they it was retconned. heavily implied that he had, he'd been ahead 
by yeah. like days, not he, by like years. They've retconned this because in the last movie, they even said like Bumblebee was fighting a World War Two and like all that stuff. So yeah, no, they they retconned it real hard. You know what I, I I thought was a really interesting special effect was the guy in the military uniform. I couldn't see him. I didn't know who that was. Yeah, I, it, it was odd. Here's what I'll, I will like that, about that was this. A, that was a joke because it's I John know, Cena. I know, it was John Cena. Okay. <laughs> Um, here's what I did like. Like, I, I, I like the idea of having a Transformer movie set in the 70s. I'm not a fan of the fact that it completely screws up what we've come before. But, I mean... It's Michael Bay. I'm use, not expecting continuity. From yeah, him. but, I mean, if you could use this as a springboard, because this is going to be Michael Bay's last Transformer movie, if you can use this as a springboard and relaunch the series from there, I'm okay with it. But, like, I'm also in, okay cool. with its... Yeah, but I'm also okay with the idea of, hey, first off, I like the fact that He's going to be in the VW Beetle that he is known to be, which is cool. I like the, you know, the, the headlights showing up on his shoulders and stuff. There was, I got real quick, there was a YouTube comment that made me just want to, want to punch through my computer screen. It said, if Bumblebee is not a Camaro, I don't know what the hell they're doing. And I'm like, the original, the original, he was a, uh, go away, just go away. Like... Figure it out, people. You don't know anything about the franchise. Like, I'm okay with you going, oh, I thought he's normally a Camaro. Like, uh, wow, I you know, I thought he was this. Or why is he a why is he a beetle? Then I would be like, oh, okay, you like you're not a you're not a fan, but you, you have the balls is going to be like, hey, they'll make him a Camaro. Yo, this movie shit. Well, you I mean, it. but this goes to show. There's a whole new generation in these into these movies now. The first movie came out in 2007. We're now Jeez, really? 11 years <sighs> past this. And so some 10-year-old seeing that movie in the theater is now 21 and may not know anything about too, the original series from the 80s. Touche. In my head, he's a 35-year-old man with a very large beard and a ponytail. Um, Probably not. But I will say this while we're talking about uh, Bumblebee and, and and the other thing that I wouldn't mind is like if John Cena is like one of the founding members of Sector 7, that giant shadowy organization. Oh, right, right on. That would be interesting yeah. seeing the origins of Sector 7 and, you know, he'll, them having to work with Bumblebee and stuff like that. He'll probably be, okay be with, with Wiki because fuck us, right? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. He, he's the he's the burly wit Wiki. Um Speaking of Transformers, uh, I'm going to, and we're in screen to screen, so I'm going to plug a, a, a documentary series that I just watched on Netflix that was really interesting, especially the Transformers episode called The Toys That Made Us. Oh, yes. I've, I've have heard. you heard about this I show? I have heard about this. I haven't really seen it, Really cool. It's, it's two four-season episodes, hour-long episodes apiece. Two four-season episodes. I'm an idiot. Yeah. Two... <laughs> Four episode seasons. Uh huh. How long are the episodes? They're they're an hour hour episodes a piece, give uh, or okay. take, All depending right. on the the content. But like, they each highlight like a toy. Like, hey, remember Star Wars toys? And like, they give you the origin and they give you, uh, you know, the the backstory of how this idea came to fruition and everything. Sure. And like the really interesting one, like. The, the Star Wars one was interesting. They did Star Wars, Star Trek, Lego. They're all really interesting. And it, it's kind of cool kind of seeing how these things came to be. And like, you know, honestly, sometimes haphazardly. Right. Yeah. Stuff like Transformers was a complete accident. And like, it's really cool to watch that and be like, wow, they were just throwing shit against the wall <laughs> and had no idea that this would work. That's like that's how we got to 154 episodes of this of the show. <laughs> Yeah, but we're not throwing shit against the wall. Maybe we should start just throwing shit against the wall. Josh isn't here. This is the episode. If we're going to do it, we're going to do it. Yeah. But I mean, it was really, really cool and really informative. And uh, I I binged it all in one night and I couldn't sleep that night. And uh, it was uh, awesome. So I highly suggest, you know, and recommend you guys watch that, that documentary. Watch the Bumblebee trailer. It was adequate. It will be a Transformers movie where robots fight other robots. And that is all I want from a Transformers movie. As I have stated before, <laughs> that's very true. I will be seeing it on Christmas. Let's do this. The, speaking then of of toys that shape your childhood, uh, the Lego Movie, Lego Two. Oh uh, yeah, segue right into that. There's a Lego episode of how how uh, yeah, the yep. toys that made us as yep. well. Uh, it, it got also its, very interesting. It got its trailer. Um, listen, I I love the Lego franchise. I I think everything that they've done so far has been has been great. Uh, I am excited to go back to the original characters. I feel like they're deliberately hiding something in this trailer in a good way. 
I think that sure. we're not getting the full story, which is perfect. This is what a right. This is what a trailer is supposed to do. I right? sure. just get us intrigued and excited. Uh, I think that the the female characters that they're introducing in this movie are going to play a much bigger role uh, than than. It, what Since you right love uh, Lego so much, you would be interested to know that they almost went bankrupt twice. Well, they they went they they fall back from extinction not once but twice. It was really cool. Uh, just just dropping knowledge here. Watch that documentary. That's all I'm saying. Anyway, um, yeah, I mean, I love I love the first Lego movie. I thought it was really in- really funny, really you know enjoyable. Uh, Chris Pratt's always great. The trailer was funny. It, it, it's taking this very dark, serious Mad Max tone, and like then there's Emmett being like, "Hey, good morning, how is everybody?" <laughs> like that that was enjoyable, that was funny. Um, I, I think I, I think they're telegraphing a little bit. I can tell that this is now the kid from the first movie has a sister, sister and she's yeah. playing with them. Yes, like they went to that star system. It's clearly like a mobile that would hang in you know her room, right? You know, and, and the little aliens very he's got like like little pink accents and stuff like and let's face it emmett can't save anybody right emmett's not emmett's not gonna be a guy who rides in there he's alone the special i know but he's not gonna ride in there alone and save the day he he works when he's part of a team well more uh, importantly he's got his plant i don't know if you saw the I, same did trailer the I did he has his plant i was glad there wasn't a leak in his ship oh sorry my bad you're an idiot i apologize no, you don't. Uh, <laughs> you want? I don't. I feel very confident in that joke, and I'm going to let it ride. All right, this uh, this next trailer is something that I am <clears> so <throat> happy to see, and at the same time, utterly terrified and plaguing, praying for some kind of controversy to take this movie off of the docket. Yeah, that sound you're going to hear is Brian's hand slapping my face when this movie premieres. It is Wreck It Ralph two. I'm practicing. So for those of you who don't know what the hell is going on, I made a bet, a very dumb bet with Brian (laughs) after Wreck-It Ralph 1 got done that Disney, the king of sequels, even if it doesn't warrant a sequel, uh, would not go forward with a sequel for Wreck-It Ralph 2, to which Brian said, I'll take that bet, you idiot. Let's make it a slap bet, to which my dumb brain went, that sounds good. (laughs) <laughs> so I am uh, I'm going to get slapped in the face uh, very hard uh, when this movie premieres. We we are going to have an event for it uh, if we can raise enough money. So you can go check out our Patreon and you can help us with supporting that event where uh, you will get to see me slapped in the face live and uh, maybe make a T-shirt out of it. So let's talk about the trailer, though, because uh, I, I I have thoughts and I, I but I want to hear yours first. I do have thoughts. And, and the, the prevalent thought that I had is, oh, my God, I can't wait to slap CJ. <laughs> Um, the second thought I had was this, this, I, listen, I love the first Wreck-It Ralph. I thought it was a great, fun, you know, funny movie. I thought the world that it was in was ever expansive, which is why I said, CJ, of course they're going to make a sequel. Um, I didn't envision the sequel to be the internet. And now that like they, they are doing that, like there's so much they can do with it. And like, but all those like little internet cliches, like autofill and things like that. Like they're gonna poke fun at it this, and it's gonna be funny. This this is the problem. Everything you're describing right now was the emoji movie. Like even down to the brands and the apps and jumping in between like I so, get it. I get it. I mean it's Disney. So but I the mean, difference is this the emoji movie A didn't have like like when you make an emoji movie and then you have to like make your characters stick to one emotion, you can't emotionally invest in, in those characters at all. And the other thing about it is, from what I understand, because I did not waste any time on this movie, the movie is very much like, words are stupid, use emoticons, like, like that's the, the gist of the movie. Yeah. And that's ridiculous and stupid, and that's I, nothing any I mean, parent should want their child seeing. I could see this movie being, hey, Wreck-It Ralph, the reason they go to the internet for whatever reason maybe he he wants to expand he's like oh i'm sick of being this in this arcade now he you know now that he's happy being a villain he's like i don't want to be in this arcade anymore and he goes out into this ever expansive world and you have some funny tropes and things that happen throughout it and then at the end he realizes hey listen you know i can make a home for myself here but you know i i have people who rely on me and things like that here's here's the thing that that i'm worried about because i have a little i have a little bit of concern for this movie 
okay. is we this movie, especially in the trailer, is relying so much on these cameos and subtle nods to the Disney Empire. At one point, in the same screen as the Muppet Show, Star Wars, Disney Animation, Pixar, Marvel, and, and then you have the Disney princesses, you have the Stormtroopers. Which really makes you realize how much Disney owns right now. Oh, God, they wait, own, wait till Fox gets in on this and we're all screwed. They right? own the rights to all of those characters. They bought the Muppets of years ago. They bought Marvel over a decade ago. They recently bought Star Wars. I, I mean, but I expect these things. But I'm worried that at some point we're going to be relying too much on those properties and not wreck it Ralph and, and his adventure. I honestly don't. I think the cameos you saw in the trailer are going to be the extent of the cameos. I really think there's not going to be a ton more. Maybe you'll have Iron Man show up and interact for a little bit. But like there's plenty like that. That blue chick at the end that's showing up. She's not any owned ip or anything like that that's a new character and they could have very easily made that like up disney princess or something like that and they didn't so i i think the cameos are not going to be as heavy as you think i i think there's going to be some fun you know antics when the stormtroopers are chasing vanellope and stuff like that and come on when she's in that room with the disney princesses and they're all like were you were you like being you know held against your will and she's like oh my god is everything okay should i call the cops like you're, it's it's funny and it's like and, it's and they're pointing being out. They're also pointing. They're also laughing at their own joke, right? Right. If, if Ralph breaks the internet. Well, shouldn't it be wreck because I'm wreck it. Ralph should it be Ralph wrecks yeah, the but, internet. Yeah, but break is but the thing breaks, on the internet. Yeah. It's a so, thing. I, like again. Yeah, but wreck's funnier. It's, no, it's Disney. So like I'm like you're gonna see it. I'm still frightened, like terrified of this movie because of your fist of fury. Uh, it's so, my hand of fury. We'll we'll see. That's true. Uh, so let's move on to the the last trailer that we have this week, which is Mortal Engines, which is the please don't call it steampunk, but it's totally steampunk Peter Jackson movie about cities on wheel. I I'm, I'm really it looks conf- cool. I'm really confused, and and I, I I I I'm not on board. Okay, you're not on board, but I am. So here here I'll tell you why why I'm on board, and I'll see if I can turn you here. Sure, please go ahead. I mean, I saw this movie. Now listen, this movie has a couple things going for it. For me, it has. This, like, fantasy slash sci-fi vibe to it. It's got this Mad Max vibe to it. Where, like, pretty much, like, it's Mad Max, but with, like, cities on wheels, which is pretty cool. Um, And then it's got, like, a very Hunger Games story to it. Hey, this guy in power, he's corrupt, and we're going to take him down. And this could be, like, an entire, like, series of movies that builds up to a final war between multiple cities like on these giant tanks and london like and that's a pretty cool concept when you think about it i thought it was cool and hugo weaving dude you go weaving. Yeah, Hugo weaving i feel like you haven't seen the doctor who episode the beast below which is i when have london goes on a basically a giant space turtle i have and it's moving through space and and then people are bad there's corruption that i like I but know. you like that episode. I, I do, which is why I don't need the steampunk version of it, because I've already seen it. But steampunk. That's not selling me. If There's steampunk steam. if steampunk sold everybody on things, Wild Wild West would be on everyone's top ten movies. It it's not. It's not? It's it's not. Ah. Oh, Especially Kevin Smith's. Not on his top ten movies. Wow. You've got, <laughs> <laughs> that is a deep cut, and I'm it's not going to explain cut. it. You nope. Google it. You Google it. And you're welcome for the results. Uh, I, so listen, I mean, I'm intrigued. Like, I show me more, and I'll be there. But like right now, I, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not gonna even movie pass it right now. Wow, I'll wait dude, for, I'll wait for it to come on on demand or Netflix. I'm gonna to say, me, I know I'm this gonna is say a Netflix is this. movie, 100 Netflix. Listen, all I'm gonna say, like Peter Jackson, I where hated all you the could Hobbit say movies. you could say whatever you say about the Hobbit movies, he is a good film director. Whatever you want to think about the Lord of the Rings trilogy or the Hobbit trilogy, they are beautiful movies that are well acted. And I think that's what you're going to get with this movie. So at the very least, even if you're not invested in the story, it's going to be shot wonderfully. And I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, that's kind of what I thought. I can't think of another movie that... No, I can't think of another movie that Peter Jackson's directed besides Lord of the Rings. Because Peter Jackson spent two decades invested in lord of the rings I mean, okay, before he did that he right. did some straight to you know 
straight to DVD things, some very small budget horror things. Oh, but we like, did the Lovely Bones. All we right, did Lovely Bones. I'll give I'll give the Lovely Bones a okay. I, the guy I, knows cinematography. He does, right? and, and anything that he's produced or something like that, I've I've at least enjoyed in some way. So at but the very I, least, I may put this this. But taking the time out of my life to get someone to watch the kids, I think this is a Netflix movie, right? But now. for that, for the cinematography alone, if you want to get ultra cinephile nerds, since That's, Josh isn't here, <laughs> you got to see that on a big screen. You're not going to enjoy it as much on your cruddy 46-inch TV. I don't think I'm going to enjoy it even if it was an IMAX. I don't even think I'm going to enjoy it if it was I don't the know, most I was watching the, Dolby surround sound. I was watching I, the, uh, the trailer on my 7-inch iPhone, and I was like, this looks right. massive in hence, scale. Hence why my 46 TV going to be perfectly fine. Rocking in some 4K HDR. We're done. Boom. Speaking of Peter Jackson, though, I, I do. I want to follow up on a story, which I know you probably don't care about too much, uh, Brian. You know I don't care about it. Uh, but I just want to bring up the fact that we now have confirmation of this. Peter Jackson has confirmed that he is not involved in Amazon's Lord of the Rings series, which I think was a, a problem Josh had as well. Because there was a, a a rumor flowing around that he may be attached, even he just He also producing. confirmed that he's not doing a DC movie in the same breath. Listen... Which I'm I, I'm okay with. I do not want a Peter. When Jackson it comes DC to these movie. little announcements or this, like, oh, Peter Jackson tweeted this hot new topic, and we're going to write an article online for ten paragraphs, giving you an entire backstory just to say no. I, I will believe it when the series drops because I don't believe for a second that Amazon. First off, I didn't believe for a second that Amazon was even going to try to get Peter Jackson if they're if they're smart. They're like, hey, this is going to be our own thing. Peter Jackson did it his way. We should get somebody new. That's the smart thing to do. The idea of them doing a Lord of the Rings series to begin with, when honestly, any fans of the book will say that those movies, especially the extended editions, are fine just the way they are. We got it. We got the story. Maybe not The the Hobbit. Right. I know there's plenty of complaints about The Hobbit, but those, those Fellowship of the Ring, Two Towers of Return of the King are damn near close to the books. They are shot beautifully. The special effects are awesome. The the scale is massive. I don't see how you can do this on a in, in a television series format, and then you're just going to include. Oh well, Tolkien did all of this other work that he unpublished. Like no, I don't care. I right. don't care. I've right. read the books. I'm a fan of the movies. I don't care about the unpublished I, shit. I think for a lot of us, we, the, we already have a problem with the premise, right? Uh, Amazon's got the money, so I'm not worried about production value at all. Amazon will literally just throw money and burn money at it because it can. Uh, it so could make those three prime subs. It could make like three Lord of the Ring trilogies and still have enough money to continue to do everything in the world. Um, the thing was just having someone who's who's so close to that source material, just kind of having a voice going, "Don't do that, you know, do that." Walk and more? Honestly, Can you do walk, more walking? So, but I, I agree with you that this isn't huge news. I just thought we should follow up on I'm it because Peter we talked Jackson about it. too. Like I, I he, the man literally spent. 15 to 20 years in this franchise. I'd be like, no, I'm good. I did my time. I'm, I'm done. I don't need to keep going back to this. Well, yeah. you know, the guy, the guy's a smart filmmaker. He needs to be doing more movies, stuff like mortal engines to say, Hey, I'm not just the Lord of the Rings guy. Right. Even though mortal and engines has a lot of scenery shots in it. Just a lot that's of the, New Zealand. I bet, I bet it's New Zealand. Bro. How much you want to make a bet? It's New Zealand. Um, a deserty part of New Zealand? Sure. We'll see. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to talk about the world of comics. See how it's affecting TV. See how it's affecting movies. But most of all, how it's affecting Brian. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for Cape Talk. Cape Talk. Um, so I want to start off with, with a topic that uh, Josh actually found and, and sent our direction. So, Josh, you are here in spirit. Uh, GameStop is set to start selling comic books within its own store. To which I think Brian and I both went, um, no, 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 thank you. We are we already got comic book shops. We don't need we don't need your games out. Here, please go ahead. Here's the thing. Like, first off, I'm surprised GameStop has lasted this long. I was in a GameStop recently. It was me, my girlfriend, and two other people, and the two other people worked there. Um, so like this this is like a I don't know. I don't even know because I don't think people are going to specifically seek out a GameStop to be like, oh, I'm going to get comic books and that that'll save GameStop's business by the ten dollars <laughs> that they drop on two comic books. It's it's not it doesn't make any sense. 
and this goes back to everything we talked about with Toys R Us is the, the idea of these specialty stores is just waning. Like it, it, I went to GameStop, you know how many like shelves of games there were? There were two walls. Yeah. That's it. And the rest Funko were like Pops statues and, and Funko Pops and T-shirts. And like, if I'm going to a GameStop, I want I want to see games. Like, I don't need comic books. Just like you said, we have comic book shops for that. Absolutely. Comic book shops who do it better, who have more knowledgeable employees to help you kind of navigate this, you know, really intense world. And like, there's there's no reason to go to a GameStop for this. And if if you do... It's, it's going to be, here's your Batman, here's your Superman, here's your Spider-Man. Like, here are your big four or five books, yep. and that's it. And God forbid you might want to get, because there's so much to this fandom, and there's so many other avenues to go, and there's so many independent books that, that have nothing to do with superheroes if superheroes aren't your thing that you could get into. And that's what and you go to a, the, a comic book store and, for. And, that's, and, and the other reason you go to a comic book store is this, because at GameStop, you're going to buy a, a used game, which you got ripped off for, after trading in a game that you got ripped off for. Uh, and then the guy's gonna turn to you and be like, "What uh, what upcoming comics would you like to pre-order while you're here?" That's called a pull list, my friend. Okay, and my, my comic question book store is this: We'll do if it much I, better than you. If I trade in my old comics uh, that uh, are worth like a couple hundred dollars, what would they give me? Fifty cents? I think two dollars for the lot. Right, two dollars for all of them in store Sold. credit. In store yeah. credit. <laughs> oh, it's fifty cents cash. Two dollars in store credit. Right, okay, right, right, and right, I have right. to pre-order. Uh, no, no, I'm good. Yeah, listen, this I, uh, the comic book game is already kind of weird uh, to begin with from a retailer perspective. Uh, just kind of dealing with all the, the, the publishers and things like that. Uh, Brian, you're absolutely right. GameStop barely has the, the staff that's knowledgeable and passionate about games, yet alone comics on top of that. Go to your local comic book store if this is something you want to pursue. Support that business Rather than going to the GameStop, which is grasping for its last last attempt uh, to to stay in business, I, I I don't see why people. I mean, I get why GameStop's doing it from a business perspective, but from a, a consumer and a nerd perspective, I will never go there to buy a comic. It's just not going to happen. Then uh, we got a very interesting uh, possible leaked poster uh, for a new Rocksteady game, Superman: World's Finest. Brian, who is Rock City, and why would I care that they're making a uh, Superman game? You mean Rockstar? I thought it was Rocksteady. I'm sorry, Rocksteady. Rocksteady. You're right. You're right. I know I am. Uh, Rocksteady is the wonderful uh, developers of a little game series uh, called the Batman Arkham series, mm-hmm. which uh, changed my life and is the best thing ever. And if you haven't played it, you should play it. And if they're doing a Superman game, Sign me the f up. And I, I can't. I mean, I'm thinking back at all of the Superman games that have been available to us in the past decade. So they are all garbage. They're oh, all the N64 garbage. Superman was a dream. Con- considered the worst video, one of the worst video games of all time. Uh, the, I had there was one for I think it was the GameCube. I want to say the GameCube, or maybe it was the Xbox. Uh, that I remember playing. You know what? It was around the time Superman Returns. What was that then? That was the Xbox. It was probably the Superman Returns. Yeah, it, and it was probably the Superman Returns game. And it was not. <sighs> there has never been a satisfying Superman game. Uh, and seeing some of the work that other people have done with, you know, Dragon Ball Z, making that a good game, like, uh, that you got you got a little bit of this, totally possible to do this. And uh, just like you said, these guys made Batman, you know, the Arkham Asylum, the, the, that series. Those are the guys I want in charge of my DC superhero. Yeah, and, and what experience. they do, what they get more than any other game developer who's adapting a property like this gets is that it, it's more than just oh, you can fly around as Superman. Like you, you, you got to have a decent story. Yeah, and, and what they did with the Arkham series was that they they went to the pool of one of the most successful Batman uh, people of all times, Paul Dini, and said, "Hey, can you help us write this story?" Because I got news for you. Before that. There weren't a ton of great Batman games. There were a couple good ones, but none that you were like, this is amazing. I think if they do the same thing with this, maybe Paul Dini can help them out. Because Paul Dini wrote for the Superman animated series as well. Right. I, I think you, you got a really awesome opportunity here. I, I hope this is real. I know it was leaked. I know, you know, Photoshop is a thing. So who knows? But I, I hope this is, th- this is real. There's been rumors of them working on a Superman game since Arkham Knight came out. So, and that was back when we like first started the podcast, like two and a half years ago, <laughs> right? Um, so I, I I really think 
this could be real and I'm super excited for it. And we will know more hopefully at E3 uh, this week. Uh, I believe it's during Microsoft's press conference. So hopefully next week we'll be able to talk about this game and be very, very, very excited. Uh, Brian, I want to ask you a question. If I were to have grabbed you last week and said on a scale from one to ten, how excited are you for Teen Titans go to the movie? Um, I would say... Why are you fucking grabbing me? And no, I'm not seeing that movie. Now, Brian, if I were to ask you now, are you going to go see T-Titans go to the movies? And how excited are you for this movie? What, what would the response be? I would say I'm still not excited, but I may begrudgingly go see this movie. The reason that Brian is begrudgingly going to this movie is that, uh, allegedly, if this movie, Teen Titans Go to the Movies, is successful, it could lead to the return of the beloved original Teen Titans cartoon. Which, Brian, I don't know if you guys have noticed in the past couple episodes, will not shut up about. So It was a great cartoon! It was amazing! After our episode that we talked about this, like, weeks and weeks ago, and I was like, that show was so good, it was so ahead of its time, and it was really, it was handling things for kids, but still being available for adults. I went on Amazon and I bought all five seasons so I could watch it again (laughs) because that's how good the show is. And if my 10 to $11 to go see this stupid movie for an hour and a half, possibly with the Burns clan, because I, I will not go see this movie by myself will help bring this show back. I'm okay with it. I don't know if you've heard, but back when Chuck was on the bubble and they said, buy subway, to save the show, right. I've never eaten so much Subway in my life. <laughs> I will support a good cause, and this is a good cause. I I I really hope that this works for you, Brian, because I have a feeling, just knowing how karma works and how the world works, you may go see this movie and never get your Teen Titans cartoon again. If that happens, I'll be so sad. <laughs> will you go and demand your money back from Warner Brothers? Give I me wish, back my I 850. Wish I could. All right. Well, I I wish you all the best. I if you I, listen, in all seriousness though, if you haven't checked out Teen Titans, not Teen Titans Go, Teen Titans the animated series, give it a watch. It, it's it's highly recommended. I don't it's think a we can very solid show. I don't think we can find it streaming anywhere. So do what you do. No, on the, just go on Amazon and buy it like I did. And it's or, worth it. Yeah. So it's uh, definitely worth a watch. Uh, I'm going to try to keep my feelings for this next topic just just surface level. And just, just kind of give you some deets. Okay, good. Because then I can, I can rail against. And it. you Go. can. Jared Leto's Joker may be getting his own solo movie from Warner Brothers. To which, not maybe. I'm, I'm pretty positive. It's, they it's officially like said it's pretty happening. much going to happen. Um, to which my reply was, uh, no, thank you. Uh, Brian, your turn. Unlike CJ, I didn't mind Jared Leto's interpretation of the Joker. I actually enjoyed it. What I don't like about it, it, like, I don't like his look, the the grill, like, the the, the silver teeth, the, the tattoos. I'm not a fan of that. The Yeah, the, the tattoo on his hand where he's, like, it's a big smile. I, I'm not a fan of all that. Like, if, if they could, you know, not do that, I'd be okay. I think Jared Leto, as an actor, was good for what he was given. Here's my problem. It's not with the idea of the Jared Leto Joker movie. If you look at the slate of the movies that DC has announced... There are like four Joker movies. Yep. There is this. There is the Elseworlds Joker movie that the guy from directed The Hangover is doing. That's still happening. The one with probably Joaquin Phoenix. Right. There is a Joker and Harley Quinn movie that they have said they are definitely doing. And that yep. will also have Jared Leto. There is the Gotham City Sirens, which should include Harley Quinn, which will most likely also include mm-hmm. Joker. Yep. And then there's Nightwing, Batgirl, and Wonder Woman 2 possibly the Batman and maybe Flashpoint. That is DC Slate and it's very Joker heavy. I just, I need DC to like buckle down and say, do we really need this many Joker movies? Because honestly, as fascinating as a character as the Joker is, he is best when he is with Batman. And and he's best (laughs) when he's kind of mysterious? And you don't know everything Yeah, we, about we it? talked about this. It, this is the the this is the Wolverine syndrome. This is the Solo syndrome. This is characters that I don't want a backstory for because their mystery makes them better. I I like your analogy there, and I'm going to get some flack for this, but I like it's like like the wolf the Wolverine. Remember the movie the Wolverine? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you left the movie, you're like, yeah, all right. 
I, for the life of me, can't even recall that movie now. If you put a gun I mean, to my I head. Can. Well, said, you're talking about Wolverine Origins. No, the Wolverine, the one really? where he went to Japan. I know, I know, I, I know what I, one you're talking about. I barely remember that. That didn't really delve into his past a whole lot. No, though. but what I'm saying was it was a movie focused solely on him. True. Right? True, true. And it was a, I it, think that and movie it was would a, have been better if you didn't have Wolverine Origins. Y- Right, but you know, uh, but that's the but that's the point. That's the point it, I'm making it, is that like everything since then yes, is like exactly this right. character is not as interesting anymore. If you did that movie without Wolverine Origins and you you hyped up this this lone samurai story that you know man without a past, man traveling the world trying to find his place in the world, that's a great story. But because you knew his origin, it was ruined. Here, here's the other thing I'll say uh, when it comes to Jared Leto, just just so I'm on the record with this. Which is what I said when we heard about him being the Joker and we heard about Suicide Squad. I believe Jared Leto did the best with what he was given. I believe what he was given was bad. But he did a great job with what he is given. I don't want to see him in his own solo movie because whoever's going to give him his material will most likely uh, not not do well. Uh, Like the Suicide Squad. You can't do a movie. Uh, with, he has like, to, with be, a character he has like to this? go against the Batman. Like that's how it works. Well, not even that. You can't do a movie like let's focus on a character who has no backstory. It's like jumping on the mi- a moving train. Yeah, that's why. Like you set up Wolverine in an X Men movie, and then you do his own, you know, movie because you got you've gotten invested in the character where he is currently. You can't just be like like we haven't seen this Joker. With the Batman, with the exception of the two minutes we caught in Suicide Squad. Squad. Correct, yes. So it, it's legitimately And even like, then, it was more about what Batman was doing with Harley Quinn. It wasn't it was right. what Batman was doing with the Joker. So it's legitimately like jumping on a moving train. We're not invested in this Joker. We don't understand what his motivations are. And this movie isn't going to give us that. Okay. Especially if it's a focus. Like, what is he going to do in this movie? Who, like, we have to have a beginning, middle, and end. Like, where, what? what is... What is going to happen? What's the big bad? What's the, the, even if it's like a mental, like, blockage that you need to, like, he has to over, like, I, I don't get it. Like, I'm not invested I, in the Joker where I need to see a story from his point of view. I, I, I just not. He works best playing off of other characters, whether that be Harley Quinn or whether that be Batman, but mostly Batman. Uh, That's pop, my problem with this movie. Papa Thornton, I look, I look, <laughs> I very much look forward to your text message. I uh, can't wait to read it. I don't, I don't know if you're going to get it. Uh, it's going to come. Uh, we're going to get one. Uh, we'll see. It's happening. All right. Uh, okay. All right. Let's switch gears over to the Marvel side of, of Cape Talk here. Uh, we got confirmation from Marvel that uh, from now on, uh, Marvel's upcoming TV shows will be set before uh, Avengers Infinity War. So I believe that means the the anyone in the Defenders, all the Netflix series, uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., uh, a Cloak and Dagger, uh, which just premiered and has been getting some has pretty been getting good reviews. really solid reviews. So definitely something I'll have to check out. I just have to figure out where the hell Freeform is and how I can find that. Um, but I'm okay with this. I think that's the right choice. I don't want to... I, we barely explain the incident in the Netflix series. I don't want to explain... If you haven't seen it already, uh, half the population of the world just kind of going away. So, uh, I mean, good. And, right and this this is smart. Let, let, let's face it. This is... The, the you left that movie you left the the end of Infinity War just like broken and if anything furthers that story anymore and gives you some sort of closure then the ending of that movie means nothing yeah so yeah. The, the idea of okay everything that's coming out for the next year so we have Luke Cage season two and Iron Fist season two set to premiere this year oh, God Iron you've Fist got season two. Uh, cloak and da- yeah yeah <sighs> you got cloak and dagger that's currently on that just premiered right now you got Ant Man and Wasp and Captain uh, Marvel all coming out before Avengers Infinity War so all of this is going to take place before Infinity War and you won't get your closure. Until Chill. May of next year. <laughs> oh, you bastard. And that's what they want. That's and exactly it's very it's smart, smart of them to make you yeah. want that. Yeah, I so I, I, I'm, I'm all about it. Like, you know, it's the right and, call. And, and Marvel has done such a good job as a training the moviegoer, the average moviegoer who's not a comic book fan over the past decade to be OK with timelines. And OK, this takes place before this or this takes place at the same time as this. And the average moviegoer is a lot smarter than they were, you know, 30 years ago. So you can get away with this 
and not have to have this title card like the events of this movie happen before Infinity War. <laughs> you know, like right, 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 you, right, right. you can you can figure it out based on what's going on. I know this is happening before Infinity War, and they've done this very smartly over the past decade. So, I mean, yeah, I'm I'm okay. Could Fox have just figured out timelines working multiple timelines? That's all we needed. Um, yeah. then the next thing is this, and right now this is this is slated to be maybe my Christmas movie. Which is uh, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. I uh, got an extended trailer uh, where we got to see Miles Morales. We got to see Peter Parker. And we get to see Gwen Stacy. Uh, Spider-Gwen. At the end of it is Spider-Gwen. Uh, listen, there's so much I want to talk about with this trailer. But, I, I, listener, I need you to seriously stop what you're doing right now and watch this trailer. It's definitely worth your time. And I, uh, I, I think you're going to kind of need that in order for our, our conversation. I think this is the best back. thing. That did you say welcome back? And welcome back. I think this is the best thing that Sony is going to do with the Spider-Man franchise since <laughs> Spider-Man 2. Yes. I'm not lying. No, I really agree with you. Like, I think this I, is a great I, I director. I love this for character so much. And, and I will defend Spider-Man 3 and Amazing Spider-Man until the day I die. But I mean, at the same time, like I- I'm a realist. I know those movies aren't great. This looks solid. Yeah, and, and I love the art direction. It feels like it's part of the comics. It, it's like it's it's a mix of computer animation and cell shading, yeah. and it, it feels like. A, and what I really appreciated is like there's a scene in the trailer where he's walking down the street and you see these like little bubbles of like what he's thinking. Text, yeah, and I'm like, to be just a normal kid, and like that's what comics do. That's man. cool. That and, and that's like just kind of immersing you in, in his thought process and things like that, and like. Yeah, I, I I expect this to be fun and, you know, interesting. And the, the nice thing is, like, listen, it's in a different universe. They said it right up front. This is not the same Spider-Man universe. In this universe, you know, Spider-Man's older. Like, he's clearly, like, he's got some gray in his, you know, temples. He's, he's got a little ruggedness. And Miles is going to be the new kid on the block. And, and that's cool. Like, I like the the whole passing of the mantle story. Like, Peter going, listen... I, I, I'm getting a little too old for this. I can't do this anymore. It's it's your turn now. Let me teach you how to do this in perfect Peter pa- Parker fashion. Like, hey, didn't I show you how to do this? No. Okay. Well, let's do it. Like, you know, I, I think this is going to be fun. I'm I'm really excited for this actually. And, and I think this also does a great job of of introducing people to Miles Morales as Spider Man and the the bigger theme of Spider Man, which Stan Lee said uh, in in a couple interviews that the best part about Spider Man is that it can be anybody under that mask. Right, and it doesn't matter what they look like, how old they are, how young they are, their gender. Spider Man can be pretty much anybody, right? Uh, and, Which and is I, why, like, you you got Miles, you got Spider Gwen, like, it, it's and who knows if we're gonna see other incarnations? I'm sure of Spider-Man. we will. If, if this is called, you know, Spider Verse, like, I read the Spider Verse story in the comic books. The amount of different versions of Spider Man, like, and what what was cool about that comic book story is they took all these like one shots and Elseworlds, like Spider Man manga and Spider Man India, and made them a part of this story. So like, it's very possible you could see those type of Spider Man show up, and you can have a Japanese kid who's Spider Man or an Indian kid who's Spider Man. It's really cool. My my uh, the other thing I I think is this is. This is going to hurt me to say the other thing I think this is really great and really smart for Sony to do. Oh wow, that hurt. Uh, is setting up uh, the eventuality that you know, Tom Holland's gonna at some point have to not be Spider-Man, and they've already set up Miles Morales in Spider-Man: Homecoming uh, a, a yeah. little bit. That this this is kind of a very soft way to introduce to a small group of people, but a good fan base, right? Uh, maybe some people have never really seen or read any kind of Spider-Man source material. We may be seeing a different person being Spider-Man while Peter Parker is still very much a thing uh the mm-hmm. only the only other thing that there's only one thing with this movie that i know is going to take me a little longer to accept and that is the fact that jake johnson is peter parker and if well, you, you don't know problem him, with jake johnson he's nick from new girl he's been a yeah, lot yeah. of things you know him if you google him you know him in some he's, he's in the cinema classic the mummy starring <laughs> yes, tom yes, cruise yes he is with tom cruise uh, but Liev Schreiber is in the movie as well, so uh, I think Liev Schreiber is the kingpin. Yes, which which is interesting. So, like, here's a couple things I noticed. I mean, you've got Green Goblin. Yep. You've got Kingpin. So, I mean, there's already two villains right there. I'm wondering, like, how many other villains they're going to bring into this to warrant not just one, but two Spider Men and a Spider Gwen, right? And possibly other, you know, alternate universe Spider Mans, like. 
it, it's going to be interesting to see how they pull this off. And who knows, like this type of you know movie and art style, this could be a whole new trilogy of its that's, own. That's like, what I'm saying. I would hey, I would pay to see these movies. Like this is going to sound really weird, so hear me out on this. I'm okay if if Sony keeps the rights to Spider Man to do this versus versus the live, any live action with Venom all the live or actions, all Black the Venom, Cat and Silver Sable bull crap that they canceled. Give them all any the of characters that. and let Sony Animation do do movies like this. And yeah. let Marvel do all the live action. I'm telling you, I would be a happy nerd. Sony would be happy. And as a happy nerd, I would go see these movies and support Sony's Spider-Man properties mm-hmm. and make everybody happy. Marvel's happy because I'm seeing their movies and they've got their character back. Sony's happy because I'm still going to go see their Spider-Man movies. It's not an MCU thing. So we're not worried about, oh, well, this does, does this, uh, does Avengers affect this? And does Infinity War? Affect? No. And just kind of letting them do the wonderful artwork. I'm serious. I am I am uh, just slack jawed when I watch this trailer to see just how great the artwork is. I mean, some of the other Spider Man costumes in there that you kind of see as cameos. I think I saw 2099 and a couple others in there. Uh, the other thing I really liked too was I, I, again a, a great part of Spider Man is the humor. The humor has to be there in order for it to be a very successful Spider Man. And Miles' uh, dad, uh, Jefferson. Yeah, that's like, what I was going to bring up. He is wonderfully hilarious and funny. Yeah. And I, I'm enjoying that character uh, immensely. I'll, Doing I'll like, what dads do best, embarrassing their sons in public. <laughs> Absolutely. So listen, overall, uh, I think this is an extremely exciting movie. I think it has it has the artwork. It has the humor. It has what looks to be a pretty you know good story to, to base off of, right? The source material is really strong when it comes to Spider Man, and I think this is a good way to introduce people into the fact that it's not all Peter Parker. There's other things out there. There's other perspectives to, to take in when it comes to Spider Man, and uh, they're all really cool. Like they're all really really cool. So listen, Sony, you have my seal of approval for this. Disney. Just let Sony do this. Just let Sony keep doing this because I, I'm not a big fan right now of Disney animation. I I I, I like this. I don't think Disney would do this. Mm-hmm. I think they would Pixar it up, and I don't want that. I, I want this. Yeah, I can get on board with that. Yeah. Well, listen, ladies and gentlemen, before I send you on your way, I do have a quick favor. Uh, if you could please help us out, go to survey.thatkindofnerd.com or check your show notes for the That Kind of Nerd podcast survey. We just want to know a little bit about how we're doing, what can we do to make the show better. Uh, and, of course, we are giving you the opportunity to win some free swag. Uh, if we get enough people responding. Swagalicious. If we get enough people to respond, uh, we'll give away a T-shirt. Uh, but for right now, we're giving away pins. Uh, so if you go ahead and you uh, fill out the survey, give us your email address, which we're not selling, uh, you will be entered in to win a pin. So uh, please go check out survey.thatkindofnerd.com or your show notes. Tell us how we're uh, we're doing on uh, together. I, I'd just like to make the show better for you. Uh, thank you so much for making us your walk around your neighborhood or your drive to work. We will see you next week with Josh Burns. Have yourself a wonderful, nerdy week. If you love comics and sci-fi and technology... Television, video games, and fantasy. We'll take a listen to our show, I'm sure you'll see. There's many points where we can agree. Like the Martha as the plot point was just too absurd. And Apple versus Android is a case to be heard. And that Josh Trank's new Fantastic Four was a turd. Well, welcome to the club, because you were that kind of nerd. Alright, let's do this. The show on the road. Really? Josh isn't even here. You don't have to do that. But it's like London. It, well, I guess they don't have roads. I guess when they're going, they don't need no roads. I don't know if I fucking hate you for saying it or fucking hate me for wanting to say it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're starting with How to Tame Your Dragon 3. Or How to Train Your Dragon 3. How to t- Is it train? You keep on saying tame or tame. Do you know why it's I keep train. saying that? Do you know why I do that? There's a, a knockoff Minecraft video that my daughter watches that says how to uh, tame your dragon instead of train. That's copyright infringement, and I'm going to see I them. think this is, I, go for it.